Welcome to our digital worship for the 13th Sunday after Pentecost, August 22nd. Thank you for joining us today as we come together to worship. As we begin our worship this morning, I ask you to please join with me as we come together for the order of confession and forgiveness. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Joshua, the 24th chapter. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness, Put away the, the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods that your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord and serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did great signs in our sight. God protected us all along the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord. For he is our God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 34. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers, to cut off their, their remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all their bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Our second reading is from Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Be strong in the Lord in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand therefore, 
and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the one that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones who did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Okay, the second song for August 22nd, ELW 810, O Jesus, I Have Promised.
Let us pray. Oh, Jesus, you have drawn us to you. And even when we don't understand, we try to be faithful. Continue to give us the faith that we need as we go through life and as we, as we encounter things that we do not understand. Amen. So even though the week is only halfway over as I'm recording this, this has not been a week, if you watch the news regularly, for a lot of happy news. And it's been a week in which there's a lot of very different opinions, and I think it's very easy to to take complex things and to try to pr propose simple solutions to them or simple ideas or simple uh, ways of thinking about and engaging the world. And yet, I think and I wish, you know, I wish that there were more people willing to say, I don't fully know what the right answer is here. I don't fully know how to engage all these different things. I don't know the things that I don't know. But there is something that I do know. You know, as we, we heard in the book of Joshua, where Joshua is there with the people and they've, they've come out of the wilderness, they've now entered into the promised land, the Lord has been with them as they've moved in and has moved the people who were occupying that land prior to them, has moved them out of that land, and now they find themselves in that land which has been promised. And Joshua comes to them and says to them, here are your choices. You know, you can serve the Lord. Or you can serve the, the gods that your ancestors worshipped generations ago beyond the river, beyond the Euphrates, when Abraham was called. Or you can serve the gods that were back in Egypt, or you can serve the gods of the people of these, these places. But what I know is that God has been with me all throughout this journey, that God has done incredible things to bring me to this place. There are many things that I don't understand along the way, but I know that God has been there with me, and therefore, I will serve the Lord my God. I will serve the God me and my family, we will do this. This is the path. This is the choice that we are making. Now, it doesn't mean that everything's going to be easy. It doesn't mean that we're always going to understand every single thing that goes along with it. It doesn't mean that we're always going to know everything that goes on at very every single moment. It doesn't mean that everything is going to make sense. And yet, for me and my household, this is the path that we are taking. Now, there are other alternatives out there. There are other alternatives that you're going to look at, and they're going to seem attractive. You're going to look at the way in which other people around you are doing things. You're going to look at the certainty that they have in certain things, and you may say, wow, I wish I was that certain. I wish I was that, um, you know, I wish I had this kind of a relationship with a God where I do these things and I get these results. And that is certainly not Lord, the God of Israel. But if your God is, I do give you these things and I get these results, then who's really in charge? Who's really the Lord there? Because our God is not a vending machine. You put in a few coins and you get what's you, your, your selection out of it. And yet God, in the midst of all those things, in the midst of all the things that we may not see or understand, remains faithful. You know, I am, I've always been more of a dog person than a cat person. And, and a good dog will always be faithful. You know, they will always love their their person, the one who feeds them, the one who, who plays with them, the one who rubs them, the one who has, has taken care of them. Even, even at times where that person has not treated them well, that dog will always come back again and again 
wanting that love, that affection, that needing to belong, needing to be a part of that person who is now a part of their pack. Does it mean that they always understand everything that's going on? No. But they want to be a part of it. I love music. I and I learned to play trombone for you know from 6th grade all the way through college. So, you know, for for 11 years, this was something that I did every day was to play this musical instrument and to to read music and to be able to take what was there on the page and transform it into a sound that came out of the end of that horn. And it didn't start out, start out sounding too good, but as it got, as I progressed, it got better and better and better. But there was always a level of complexity that when you looked at the music score that the director was working on, that always blew my mind. You know, because they would have the parts for all the flutes and all the clarinets and all the saxophones and all the French horns and trumpets and trombones and, and drums and tubas and, and all of them, all of them having their part, all of them having their voice to play at various points, all of them coming together to form this great and incredible piece of art that was being presented to the world around them. And yet I knew my part. I knew the part that I had to play in that. I didn't know all of it, but I knew my part that I had to play in that. Whatever song I was playing, I could do my part. I could understand my part. But there were still many things I didn't understand. There are still many things to this day I do not understand. You know, I'm a person who is in many ways, given my life to trying to understand understand what God wants of us, to understand the scriptures, understand you know what it is to be the community of God and to be to be church. And I will be first to admit that there are many things I do not understand. I oh I understand on one level what Jesus is saying in the gospel today, but I don't fully comprehend it. And I'll be the first to admit that. And I can really understand why so many people wouldn't understand it. And I know that the part of this is that God has to give us something to open our eyes, to open our, our hearts to faith. But what I do understand is where the disciples are at the end of this. Jesus asks them, are you going to go away also? And their response, Lord, to whom can we go? To whom can we go? We are yours. You have called us. You have named us. You have, have made us yours. You have somehow given us this, this gift of faith. To whom can we go? You're the one who has the words of eternal life. We've come to know and to believe that you are the one who God has sent to us. You are the where, place where God is meeting us. There are many things that we don't know, but this thing we do know. There are many things that will confuse us along the way. There are many times we will stumble along the path. But you are the bread that we need. You are that which sustains our life. You are that which gives meaning to this journey that we are on. So Lord, to whom else can we go? Far be it from us to serve another master. Just like the Israelites could say, far be it from us to serve other gods. We will serve the Lord. And so in the midst of the many things that you don't know, may this day you know who you serve. May you know the one that you go to again and again and again. Because our Lord has those words of eternal life that we need. Our Lord has that which we seek. And somehow we've come to realize it. So as we gather together, as this community of people that have been drawn to Jesus, 
may we know that this is the place where we are centered. These are the words of eternal life that we need to hear. This is the bread of life which has come down to heaven to give us the nourishment that we need for this life and beyond. And maybe be willing to to live in the midst of the unknowns. Because we know the one who we go to at the center of all things. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I ask you to join with me as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we lift up this world that you love. Renew your creation and give wisdom to all your people who share in your responsibility to care for the world. Give wisdom to leaders of nations, states, and cities to care for your people and the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of this world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstones of peace. Protect and bless all who sacrifice to guard our freedoms, including Ben, Bryson, Christian, Clayton, Daniel, Dylan, Hayden, Lindsay, Luke, Michael, Mike, Spencer, Steve, Sydney, Tyler B., and Tyler G. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. We lift up before you Aubrey, Austin, Becca, Betsy, Bob D., Bob S., Brenda, Brett, Krista, Craig, Dan, Dave, Deborah, Dorothy, Doug, Elizabeth, Gary, Jamie, Jan, Jerry K., Jerry N., Jonathan, Marie, Matt, Maureen, Michelle, Mike, Patrick, Peggy, Pete, Richard, Rita, Sal, Sandy, Scott, Shay, Shirley, Steve, Tom, Vim, Springwright, all medical and emergency workers, and those whom we pray for in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the ministries of the ELCA and the Northern Texas, Northern Louisiana Synod. We also lift up in prayer today Grace Lutheran Church, Fort Worth, St. Matthew's Lutheran Church, Fort Worth, and teachers and professors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, I want to lift up those who are dealing with natural disaster in Haiti and those who are living in the in the living in Afghanistan in the midst of that turmoil that's that's unfolding this week. Now, Lord, in trust and in hope, we commend to you, O Lord, all for whom we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you as you gather together with fa- friends and family in your homes. So just a, a couple announcements. So this... Uh, this Sunday, uh, between our worship services, we will have uh, coffee with council to talk about the, uh, the upcoming proposal on both the uh, the new sign and the repairs to the building to help alleviate the, the leaking issues that we have. So that'll be between services at 945. And then also this upcoming Sunday, we will have uh, the Fantasy Football League. So again, it's a, a chance. It's just a fun thing. But for anybody who wants to be a part of it, you know, you draft your team. Uh, it's a $20 donation per, per team. And then who, whichever team wins gets to, to select where the, the combined pot goes to which charity it's going to go to. Um, again, I mentioned uh, in our prayers about Haiti. So one of the, uh, 
one of the things the outreach team has, has decided is that they will match any donations to Lutheran Disaster Relief that come through the church for Haiti over the next couple of weeks up to $500. So if you would like to participate in that, that is a, a, an opportunity that the church will match within that. Um, also a reminder that on August 29th, between our two services at 945, we will have a congregational meeting. Uh, you should have received information on this, uh, but again, we're voting on both doing some repairs within the building and then also uh, replacing our signs. So please uh, be engaged with that however you can. Uh, and then there are just a number of other upcoming events. So we have, um, for example, the, uh, the Rejoice Block Party coming up uh, September the 12th. And then on September 18th and 19th, we have God's Work Our Hands coming up. So there's, there's a lot of big things coming up over the next couple of weeks. A lot of opportunities to be in, engaged. Um, one that I just uh, just popped in my mind again is uh, a week. So Saturday the 28th, 28th uh, from 8 to 11, we will have the opportunity to come out here. We're going to be doing some some yard work. We'll be cleaning up the area. So uh, and then have a chance afterwards for some time together to just uh, you know pop a beer or whatever you want to drink and just have a little fellowship time. So that'll be from 8 to 11 uh, this upcoming Saturday, the 28th. All right. I know a lot of announcements, um, but again, it's that time of the year where a lot of things are starting to move and start, we're, we're trying the best we can to, to, to move into both the reality of, you know, we know that a lot of people are still watching predominantly digitally, but we have people who are back and we're trying to do things as safely as we possibly can. So. Thank you for your continued support, however you're, you're participating at Rejoice. This is also the part of our service where we would receive our offering. Um, again, thank you for your continued faithfulness in this. Um, if you've watched me every week, you know that there are two we ways in which you can donate. Either sending a check to Rejoice at 12,000 Independence Parkway in Frisco, Texas, 75035. Or you can go on our, our website or, th or the Tidely app and give through that. At this point, we will prepare for communion, so I invite you to gather together bread and either juice or wine if you want to celebrate at home. Communion is a central part of our worship here at Rejoice. It's a place where we trust that Christ meets us. So we gather together and we remember how in the night in which he was betrayed, how our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. May Christ be present with you as you celebrate together at home with friends and family.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in the sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your death and resurrection. May these gifts of your body and blood create in us the fruits of your redemption and grace in our lives. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. God has claimed us as his own in Christ. We seek to follow Christ with these marks of disciple life. Praying daily, worshiping weekly, studying the Bible, serving others, building spiritual friendships, giving to God and our neighbors in need, engaging God's mission. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. And we will.